Welcome back to Criticalism, ladies and gents, where we tackle indie films and home releases as well as spotlight other critics you might be missing. I'm Matt Rowe, as you know, and if you like what we do here, make sure you give us some thumbs up, ding the bell, and stick around to the end where I'll be reading and responding to recent comments. Since I've been gone due to my recent wedding and the forgiving screening that's happening this weekend, I'm playing quite a bit of catch up, so instead of retreading all of my articles that I published in the last month, I'm going to pick a couple of my favorites and then devote the rest of the time to other critics, their views, and all y'all's input. Over at Under the Radar, you should check out my review of the Criterion release of 1984. I wrote, while there's little conflict that I can see over the quality and legacy of 1984, there's even less debate over whether or not this release is worth its asking price. Highly immersive, detailed, and passionate, this is a great home release for any collecting cinephile. This release is phenomenal, and its supplemental features are dope, so y'all owe it to yourselves to give yourself a fun metatextual movie going experience. Link in movie, below. And over on Film Thread, a review of the new short film by Ryan Oxenberg, Together, which I write, Though some imagery seems to be utilized just to give the audience a brief scare to remind them this narrative has a horror foundation, it manages to offset their odd placement due to the quirky pacing, composition, and tone. It's as if Wes Anderson had decided to dip his toes into zombie movie making. When this film becomes publicly available, I could not recommend it anymore. The performances and cinematography are peak elements, but really the whole thing is solid. Review below. And that's it for me, my dudes, so let's swing into the public arena and check out some other critics that are slugging it out in the interwebs. First, we scoot over to the Anime News Network and Theron Martin's review of the new English dub for Millennium Actress, which was just recently re-released in theaters for a select run. He writes, The English script is a seamless replacement for the original English subtitles, which were always a little clunky in places. It even fully retains the meaning and near-exact wording of the movie's famous final line of dialogue. Most of the review is contextualizing and gushing over Satoshi Kone, which I can always get behind, but it's always really nice to see a fresh perspective on my favorite animated movie, so y'all should check it out. Links below. Over on YouTube, we've got a channel that's considerably larger than ours, Mr. Jeffrey Stilwell, and he's put out a video exploring the ins and outs of film noir. Featuring examples from classic noir's Double Indemnity, Murder My Sweet, and The Maltese Falcon, Jeffrey breaks down the genre's inspirations, contextualizes the appeal of the era, and explores its classic tropes through a well-researched and slightly humorous video. While his mic is a bit muffled and the editing has a few odd pacing issues, it is a fairly good introduction for those wanting to explore these types of movies. And film noir is amazing, so this really shouldn't be a hard choice. And another channel on YouTube that deserves a shout out is the channel Story Street, and their latest video, How Full Metal Alchemist 2003 told a story in one shot. Breaking down a single shot in the original FMA anime, he manages to deconstruct many complicated aspects of cinematography, color theory, perspective, and visual metaphor prevalent in the image. While the shot itself only lasts a couple of seconds, and believe me, you watch these couple of seconds repeatedly through the video, Story does an absolutely outstanding job keeping the information fresh, and his humor makes the analysis an easier pill to swallow. Hey Street, I'm curious what you think of the infamous elevator scene from Evangelion. I happen to think it's amazing, so you just shoot me a couple of your thoughts and we can dialogue about it. And finally, I wanted to spotlight the channel The Thought Theater, and their video essay Godzilla King of the Monsters is almost a masterpiece. The video is designed with a lot of care, and its structure reminds me a bit of an Eye Patch Wolf or Criswell video, so there's a lot of heart and care mixed in with the analysis, and that isn't something I see enough of. While I wouldn't agree with all the assertions made in the video, the unique perspective provides a refreshing tone to the conversation that is far less bombastic and in your face face you find in pretty much every Facebook movie group. It's fun when you find a debate that isn't 90% bashing other people's opinions or over glorified self-aggrandizement, but either way you should check out their channel, a lot of their videos have the similar tone of voice so it really sounds like they're hitting their stride. All the videos that I've mentioned and their links beneath me. And as we close up our first episode back we've got a couple of comments from y'all that we'd like to respond. On our very old Final Flush episode of Cinema Historia, First Things First 88 wrote, Not only do you take 20 minutes to say the same thing over over and over again, and you're also telling people to get raped like an asshole, I think you missed the point entirely, dog. You also seem like a low-tier cinephile who still thinks Kubrick is a god. You're also Fedora, SMDH. Well, things, it was a comedy sketch playing to film snobbery, so yep, there's a reason why it was kind of cyclical and had all of those tropes in there. And yeah, it's a video I'm not too proud of all these years later. I was leeching onto popular video essay styles at the time, and I was an edgy asshole, so there's that. But check out our recent content, you'll see which tier I fall into now, but Kubrick is a film god. You, he's not the only one in the pantheon or anything like that, but uh, you don't have to be a cinephile to figure that one out, dog.
Paul Bomber wrote on my film review of Cadulthood, It's the worst film I have seen. It's an extremely negative portrayal of black people in London and a gift to white supremacists. It does for black people what the eternal Jew did for Jews, portraying them as feral city rats. Paul, I don't know if we watched different movies or different cuts of the same film, but I couldn't get an ounce of that from Kidulthood. Now, true, it's been a few years since I've seen the movie, but my memory isn't that bad, and I couldn't get any of that from my last watch through. Uh, though we are entitled to our own perspectives and opinions around movies, so if you see enough just cause in this film to declare it as such, that's all on you, sir. And finally, Dama wrote on our Ice Age episode of Shitflix, I just watched this. Holy shit, what a mess. And yep. I can't really dispute that one, my dude. And if you want to see a mess, you should check out Space Thundercats. Way more of a mess, way more fun. You're probably going to end up laughing on the floor. And that's it, Cinephiles and Critophiles. Thanks for hanging 10 to the end. If you checked out the movies, the reviews, the others I mentioned, let us know your thoughts in the comments section. All socials and Patreon in the script, and I'll check y'all next week. Until next time. Contributions from viewers like you. Thank you.